What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'll talk about the Battlefield 2042 beta. Kind of give you my feedback, give you the good and the bad. There was a lot of things I liked about the beta. So there's going to be less good than bad here probably. Let's go ahead and start with the bad things first. I felt like the HUD is good at times and that it is very cluttered at times. Now during the beta we did not have as many customization options as we would have liked. There was tons of customization options in the settings. There was just a lot of them we could not, you know, mess with or, you know, change or do anything like that. So once the game is released, I'm sure we can kind of tailor that HUD to more, uh, I guess, more to our liking or individual likings. But I just feel like it's cluttered at times. And one thing I think DICE needs to clean up is it felt very weird when all the text was different. Like you might see a kill feed or players names or whatever the case may be, things that pop up on the screen like right now. It feels like the texts are all different. I'm not just sure if they, uh, I'm not sure if they just kind of used all these different texts and things just for the beta version. And this, of course, is a two to three month old version of the game. This may be changed by now anyway, but it just felt kind of weird. I know it's just kind of a, a personal issue. I know not everyone may have that issue, but I thought it just looked kind of off when all the text looked different. And then plus all the clutter, it just kind of looked strange to me. Like I said, sometimes it would look very clean, but if you were in a very centralized area, where you can see a lot of different flags and a lot of different stuff going on. It did feel very cluttered and kind of, you know, a little too much at times. So I'm hope, hoping that they will clean that HUD up just a bit before the game releases. And then of course, as players, we will have those setting options to, you know, further customize that to our liking. The next thing that was kind of concerning to me was the amount of bots. Now, when we found out there were going to be bots in Battlefield 2042, I talked about this then, that was several months ago. My concern was that you will end up in lobbies with more bots than people. Uh, now, this was an issue to me at the beginning of the beta, kind of those early access days. If you pre-ordered or you had EA Play, there seemed to be 10, sometimes 12, maybe a few more bots, maybe as many as 15 on each team. So you might actually only have 30 or 40 real players on each individual team and the rest were bots. Now, as the beta moved on into the open phase and everybody could hop in and play, this seemed to kind of work out. You didn't see what I bought uh, kind of here and there. And I'm assuming they're doing this, in my opinion, and I talked about this before in that video months ago, for the reason of for new gen. Not a lot of players have a new gen console. Of course, I'm playing the beta here on PS5, but PS5, Xbox Series S and X and PC are in lobbies together. Old gen players are going to be in their own lobbies. So PS4. Xbox One will be playing, you know, kind of together in smaller lobbies. Those won't be 64 on 64. That will be the traditional 32 on 32 that we're used to for several, several years. So I'm not sure if DICE has done this just kind of to make sure that these games are balanced when it comes to new gen. I know that they didn't want to keep the games balanced, so it's not like a 64 on 30 situation if everybody keeps quitting. And I do understand that because if you get into a lobby and player, uh, the team is just getting crushed at your own, most people are going to quit. Uh, which is sad, but it is what happens. I'm just hoping when the game is released, there's not a lot of bots uh, in the game all the time. Now, I do think it will be an issue for the people that have ordered uh, or pre-ordered the Gold Edition or going to buy the Gold Edition or the Ultimate Edition of the game, just for the simple fact of that comes out a week earlier. Uh, the Standard Edition of the game, the official launch date, is a week after. So uh, you're going to be able to get you know a week early playtime or a week you know extra of playtime if you have the gold edition or ultimate edition i'm assuming you're probably going to see a fair bit of bots then but hopefully when the standard edition releases you'll see that normal player count kind of even out and i expect to see some bots here and there people are going to leave people are going to quit so you should see you know a couple bots on each team and i'm assuming the games the algorithm whatever they're using here is just going to replace a player with a bot when someone leaves to keep the teams even and when a player actually joins that server i'm assuming i'm hoping we have the option to join servers and it's just not automatically you just pick what mode you want to play and it throws you in a server i'm hoping we have the option to pick the servers like we have in the past but you know that way if you join a game and there's actually a spot there it's going to just replace a real person uh you know for that bot and i'm assuming that's how it's going to work we don't know a whole lot of details about exactly how the bot system works. DICE and EA have not gone into great detail about that. But that was a, another concern of mine that I have that I did see during the beta. Like I said, those bots were not as bad. Uh, there were not as many during kind of the end of the beta. But the beginning, the early access part, there was a good bit. And a lot of people were complaining that they were a little too OP. In my opinion, the AI is kind of bad. They would be shooting at you from crazy distances with pistols and shotguns. And sometimes they would absolutely just destroy you, just kind of turn on you instantly. It was kind of strange, but 
hopefully that'll, those kinks will get worked out as you know the kind of the game's life cycle goes on. Another thing that was a big issue, and Dice has kind of already addressed this, and hopefully it will be fixed when this, once the game is released, is player icons. A lot of times you would be emptying a clip into a friendly because the player icons would not load up correctly, and you would ADS at someone that would have no icon, no name, no nothing above their head. And sometimes this would happen with enemies even. And hopefully that's going to be fixed because that makes it very confusing, like I said, with a cluttered HUD anyway at times. And then you have players running around in front of you that have no name, no icon, no anything. You would even have friendlies on your team. And of course, you know your squad's a different color than the rest of the players in the game on your team. And sometimes you couldn't even see your own squad member's name. So it was very frustrating. Uh, like I said, sometimes you would just open, open up on somebody trying to kill them. And you would realize that it was a friendly and not an enemy. And I saw this happening on both sides. You know, any game I was in, I saw players on the other team doing it, players on our team doing it, players doing it to me. I've done it to other players. So... Hopefully that will get worked out as well. Another thing that is concerning is map size. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, wow, there's 128 players. How could the map size be too big? I think most people that played the beta will say the orbital map is good in spots. There's like centralized spots that are very nice with this map. Um, you know, it feels like you're getting a lot of action. You're always in the action, but then like all battlefield games, those outskirts kind of feel empty when you're moving from flag to flag. You're either getting sniped or you're getting hit by tanks and, you know, open fields. And the concerning thing to me is that Dice said that this map, the orbital map, was a moderate mid-size map. If there are bigger maps in the game that are more open, I just feel like you're going to be getting picked off by snipers and tanks. Or you kind of feel like you're just running around in no man's land until you get to a certain point, you know, to a certain flag. I do understand that Dice was trying to keep the fight fights a little smoother a little faster paced in the centralized areas you know where there's a lot of maps where, or a lot of uh, excuse me flags where you can go back and forth you know between like right around this area to the d side you could get back and forth between those pretty quickly but then those kind of maps that are on the edge of the map on the outskirts it just kind of felt like you were in no man's land and if some of the maps in the final version of the game are going to be even bigger than this if this is just a moderate size map I'm not sure if a lot of fans are going to enjoy that. I, I think some of the maps may end up being too big and feel like a lot of empty space. I think the uh, specialists need different camos. I talked about this yesterday, and I think I kind of worded it wrong in the video how I, how I said it. The game does have factions. I said the game needs factions. The game just needs faction camos, different faction uh, player models. All Battlefield games in the past, whatever side you're on, had different player models, different camos. DICE has addressed this, talking about changing the camos just in general for each side. But I'm really not sure why the engineer, why the medic, why the support, why the recon all looks the same. It's the exact same character model on each side. They do have an option, in my opinion, to add some of the character models maybe out of the portal itself you know the you have a lot of the different character models and camos from you know past battlefield games within the portal so i'm hoping they can add some different models in because to me just to have different camos will help on each side but it's still just strange that both engineers on each side are going to look the exact same character model wise uh, another thing of course is controller schemes we do not have a option for any controller schemes at least on ps5 when you went to that controller scheme page it was just blank I'm hoping we're going to have the option to change the buttons up a lot uh, a lot, and, and kind of do our own custom controls. During the beta, there was no option to change uh, L2, R2 to R1, L1 if you shoot with the top bumpers instead of the back triggers, which I do. I use those in every single shooter I play. So I actually had to go into my accessibilities on my PS5 and change that. There is a option in the game to actually have custom controls, but we were not able to change those in the beta. So I would have liked to seen more of the customization options we have within the game for the controllers and things we did not get to see that sadly so that's something we're going to kind of have to wait and see how it is when the game does release but i would like to have more info about that personally i would like to be able to see and be able to do as much as i could with these you know different settings and different controller settings and different in-game settings just to be able to see how the game functions and what options we will have as players to customize the game to kind of fit our needs and last but not least uh, a lot of people talked about this, and I didn't really have a huge issue with it, but it is something the community has been talking about, and that is a lack of aim assist. Some players said there's no aim assist at all. And I've seen a lot of you know content creators that are great content creators out there on YouTube, on Twitch, saying that they felt like they had no aim assist at all on console. 
Personally, for me, it wasn't really that bad. You know, I did experience what they were talking about sometimes in close range gunfights. It feels like there is no slowdown at all, but at other times I did feel like there was slowdown uh, in those close range gunfights. Now, a lot of console players are concerned because they feel like PC players will have an advantage if there is absolutely no aim assist at all on the controller. Uh, we'll kind of have to wait and see how DICE handles this, but I know this will be probably a thing that's going to be a, a make or break uh, kind of feature for a lot of players. Some people won't buy the game because if there's no aim assist, no slowdown whatsoever on console. And I don't think it needs to be strong. I just think it needs to be there, you know, just a little bit for console players just to help out just a touch, not a whole lot, not, you know, crazy overpowering or anything like that. But in general, I think a lot of console players probably will not play the game because they're going to feel like that, uh, you know, they're going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. And you can turn cross play off. I tried to do it during the beta just to see, and it took way too long to ever get in a game because most people were playing with the cross play on. That may not be a, a big of an issue or as a big of an issue once the full game is released, but I'm not quite sure how that's going to work either. There may be no aim assist in those lobbies, you know, if you're playing even just with console players. Kind of go over some things quickly that I really enjoyed. And there was a lot, so that's why I'm not going to, you know, really go in depth too much about the things that I liked. I think the gunplay and the time to kill were perfectly fine for me, in my opinion. The plus system where you can change your attachments on the fly on the fly is great. You can go from long range gunfights to close range gunfights very, very quickly and kind of just change out, you know, the attachments you want to use. I think that is one of the best things they've added to Battlefield in a long time. Uh, I think the tanks, planes, choppers all felt like Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. Most of you know, if you've been around the channel for a long time, i played all the Battlefield games ever. Battlefield 3 was one of my personal favorites, but I felt like all the vehicles felt like that old school Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 kind of fights when you're in those, how they work, how they act, all that kind of stuff. I think the specialists are neat because they're pretty much interchangeable. Each specialist has its own unique thing. For example, the assault has the zip line, but everything else is interchangeable. So, you know, you had the medic, you had the syringe, but any character can run med packs, ammo packs, that kind of stuff. And I think that was a very neat system to where you have a few things here and there that are a little bit different for each specialist, but everything else is pretty much interchangeable. And I like that idea a lot. Graphics and gameplay, really nice. Of course, on my PS5, I do play in performance mode. I always play uh, shooters in performance mode. I don't ever play anything kind of that graphical mode unless I'm playing a single player game. It probably could have looked a lot better in these, uh, you know, in the graphical mode. But personally, for me, in performance mode, it ran better. Uh, all shooters, in my opinion, on PS5 run better in performance mode. But overall, I thought the graphics were still really good and the gameplay was really good. And I did have a lot of fun playing. I know a lot of people are kind of torn if they liked it or not. But overall, I really did enjoy it. I was happy to see another modern Battlefield game. Like I said, I really enjoyed all the games from the start up until about Battlefield 3 and 4. After that, it kind of been eh, over the last several years. So leave me a comment, guys. Did you enjoy the Battlefield beta? Are you planning on buying Battlefield 2042? Or are you going to wait and see kind of what happens after the game is released? I'm still expecting a Rocky release. We always get Rocky releases with Battlefield. That's kind of how it is. But leave me a comment with your thoughts. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description. The community discord, my Twitter, and of course, the affiliates here on this channel. Amazon, Associates, and Empire Jerky. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.